Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, let me start with a few words about my career. We were 43 selected out of 5,000 candidates in 1973 to join the academy. Only 29 of us could graduate and become pilots. From then on, it was a survival of the fittest in an intensely competitive and very, very challenging career. I was lucky to be able to fly just about every trainer and fighter aircraft of the Pakistan Air Force as you saw in the introductory slides. When the most thrilling career in the world, that's what I thought, was over in 2005 after 33 years of service, I decided to press the control alt delete button so that I could reset my life completely. And the watchwords for this were learning from the past, turning a new page, breaking loose from the rut, and challenging existing norms. So this is what I'll be talking about. It's not about what I have achieved. Rather, my message is, what can you achieve if you take an EQ from what I'll be talking about? After retirement, I had a number of options. There were hobbies and activities for which I never had the time while I was in the Air Force. A very busy life, but after retirement, I thought I'll attempt all of these hobbies, sort of a multitask, and some of these involved self-tutoring, learning new things that I'd never done before. Here are some of the options that I looked at. They are a bit way off. Some of them might seem a bit eccentric. But I decided to do all of them during my post-retirement years. That's about 12 years now. I shall cover these one by one in alphabetical order. Odd subject here, ancestral genetics, about which none of us perhaps would know much about, and I had no clue about what was this, except for the fact that this is about finding your roots. I wanted to know where we came from, who are we, which I'm sure all of you must be wanting to know. For this, I tutored myself about genetics, human migration patterns. I got myself DNA tested, found out my paternal line and my maternal line. It was a surprise for us to discover that my father's line was from Central Asia and my mother's line was from Anatolia and Caucasus region. And then yet another comprehensive ethnic origins test which shows my ethnic constitution. The idea to put this across to you is that for a novice like me who was into military flying, this was a totally new subject but I thoroughly enjoyed it, our family enjoyed it, our friends enjoyed it. I've roped in a number of uh, my friends and we've all been able to derive very useful information about this. So that was one of my first interests. Archaeology is yet another subject that I was interested in, abiding interest. Actually, uh, while I was in service, I read a lot about Indus Valley civilization and I was lucky enough to go to Pasni, where our squadron used to deploy every year. Just north of Pasni, about 20 kilometers north of it, is a site called Sohta Koh. So after midday, when there used to be a dust storm every day and we had nothing to do, there was no cable TV, there was nothing actually, I started looking for this site. This is an unexplored site, discovered but not excavated. This is a picture of that site taken from a Mirage aircraft and I decided to carry out a surface exploration of this area. 
because actual digging is not allowed by the Directorate of Archaeology. I did a computer-aided reconstruction, exonometric reconstruction of this site, and this is what the village looked like, and I'm proud to say that this is being used by quite a few scholars, this reconstruction, because this site is actually very inaccessible in a difficult area, and we have security issues where quite a few scientists and explorers cannot visit. During these surveys, which were spread over almost 20 years, and about six or seven visits to this place, I was able to discover a jar, which is about two and a half feet, a storage jar, which was presented to the Director General of Archaeology, Mr. Rafiq Mughal, in 1996, and proud to say that this lies in the National Museum, Karachi. Then in 2004, interestingly, I found a heart-shaped fragment of a seal. This was a copper seal shown on the right side, which interestingly also was on the 14th of February, which is the Valentine's Day in 2004. This was handed over to uh, the director of Harappa Research Project, and he told me that it actually was a square seal, and this is one of the rarest seals found in a coastal site, both in India and Pakistan. This was then sent to the University of Wisconsin-Madison by Dr. Kenoyer, and they determined that this site was about 4,000 years old. That's uh, Dr. Kenoyer, who speaks actually Urdu and Punjabi as good as any one of us. He's been here in Pakistan, visiting Pakistan for the last 30 years. He is a sort of a mentor to me on Indus Valley subjects. I also had an interest in astronomy and space since my childhood, but like I said, we never had the time and resources, busy in night flying, so there's no question of carrying out astronomy at night. But after retirement, I joined an astronomy club close to my house, which is Lahore Astronomy Society. Thirty of us have very advanced telescopes. We deliver monthly lectures on difficult subjects on space, and I'm one of the regular ones over there. I also set up an astronomy club, one of the most advanced astronomy clubs in an educational institution, my alma mater, Karat College, Hassan Abdal. This picture shows a solar telescopy during daytime looking at the sun. This is a unique capture from my telescope of the planet Mercury transiting the sun. This is once in a hundred years or so. The next time you'll see such an event after 120 years. Uh, I've been writing for, on defense subjects for various international magazines and travelogues in Pakistani newspapers. So I thought the next step after doing all that for several years was to write a book myself. And my first book, Great Air Battles of Pakistan Air Force, was published in 2005 and it is still in print after 13 years. Uh, Three months ago, I published my second book, In the Ring and on its Feet, which you see on the right of the first one. This is about the air war of 1971. And then I've switched subjects and from the military war stuff, my next book, which is coming out this year, is Offbeat Pakistan. These are my personal travels to some of the real offbeat areas in the country. So inshallah, it should be out by the end of this year. <laughs> Being a pilot, uh, I never got a chance to do paragliding. I happened to be in Chitral where a taxi driver asked me what was my profession. When I told him I was a pilot, he said, have you done paragliding? And I said, no. So he suggested that we have a paragliding uh, gliding club in Chitral. So that's where I did my paragliding, which is quite different from aeroplane flying.
having been up in the air and on land and being a good swimmer i'd done all three but never been under water so i did my scuba diving course this is a certified parks uh, professional association of dive instructors course that i've certified for and plan to do my advanced scuba diving course which also makes me the oldest scuba diver active scuba diver of pakistan <laughs> next week going for two more dives uh here is extreme cycling that i've been doing for the last about 6 years although this picture shows a bit of a picnic and one of the ladies here might recognize herself in this picture or perhaps you can this miss hina right in the center about 4 years ago uh in 2013 me and a friend of mine who's doing a doctorate in public administration in usa an air force chap both of us decided that every year we will take extreme cycling rides expeditions just the two of us to the northern areas of pakistan and the first trip was to the northernmost latitude of pakistan at 16000 feet snow clad without oxygen we were on our way uh this involved camping all the way about uh, 19 days uh you can see the fence here across that fence is china this is not punjab pass this is the northernmost latitude of pakistan called kilak pass that's my friend and myself at the border post 16000 feet just about 16000 feet there's no north of pakistan beyond this point uh this trip was so successful no headache no puncture no problem at all we done 500 kilometers with a pack of about 25 kilograms on our cycles a bedroom on wheels a kitchen on wheels a pharmacy on wheels a workshop on wheels worked perfectly so we decided we'll do it every year next year we decided to go from skardu to believe me siachen glacier Here we are on our way to Siachen Glacier, and these three gentlemen, two of us wearing military uniforms, and the army captain who was there. Uh, this is a place called Gyari, where unfortunately there was an avalanche, one of the most ferocious avalanches, where 140 soldiers uh, were martyred. And you can see the path of the avalanche just behind us. It was a massive one. This is uh, the Osai Plains. Uh, in 2014, I did a solo trip because my partner could not join me for one or the other reason. So this was from Gilgit to Chitral, one way, 500 kilometers. In 2016, we decided to do something different. That's a Facebook post that I had put up. Starting from Sost, Punjab, Tashkurgan, Kashgar, Yarkand, and Hotan, completing exactly 1,000 kilometers into China. Two brave hearts, unstoppable. My age at that time was 62. In fact, both of us were 62. 20 days of camping in the wild, snow leopard country, snakes, scorpions, wolves, uh, in uh, Taklamakan Desert. and we actually made it this is uh, <clears throat> this is mustaf ata one of the uh, tallest mountains in uh, xinjiang province on our way this is taklamakan desert which is uh, ferocious notorious for travelers of the middle ages who actually died of heat and thirst we were hit by sandstorms we were hit by a flood we survived that we had a typical pakistani style police encounter we survived that 
and eventually, and we survived on this particular day, uh, six punctures, I don't know what went wrong. For 19 days, we had no puncture, and this particular day, we had six, and the next day, we had four more, and we were just at our limits, but we made it to Hotan. This is one of the pictures on the way. This is the CPAC route at that time from China was uh, under construction. So this was a really rough ride, about 80 kilometers in gravel and upslope. Sampling watermelons, famous watermelons of Hotan, and this is uh, something like a Pakistani halwa puri. This is a diorama in Urumqi. And for this year, we're planning a 1,200 kilometer ride from Caspian Sea to the Black Sea, from Baku in Azerbaijan to Batumi in Georgia. I hope we can pull this off. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the idea uh, of, of showing you all of this was, bluntly put, if I can do it, why can't you do it? All of these things or some of these things, they're all very different. They're way off, but like I said, it can be done. So that was really the message from my side. I started from a tricycle and ended up on a bicycle. And I flew again after 30 years, flew the F-16 last month, so you can sleep tight. Pakistan Air Force is awake. Uh, that was last month. And here is a GoPro image while flying the F-16 uh, a couple of days back, a couple of weeks back, actually. So uh, the first takeaway of this lecture that I'd like to share with you is that without a challenge in life, you are as good as a fossil. For you have nothing to leave behind when you're gone. And the second most important takeaway is that set yourself impossible goals and make them possible. Like we tried and we've done it. Thank you very much.